Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Our guest today is newly elected Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney. Mayor, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, John. As we get started, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, your background, maybe where you're originally from. I originally was born in Devil's Lake, North Dakota, raised there and went off to school at Notre Dame. After Notre Dame, I was fortunate to come back to North Dakota. Went to UND Medical School. At that time, it was only a two-year school. So I went out to Tufts in Boston, learned what Boston had to offer, then came back to Minneapolis Hennepin County Medical Center. Started my work here in Fargo in 1980. Okay, and when did you get into politics? No, politics happened about 205. Um, <laughs> we were driving around one day and I noticed Wimmer was running for commissioner and I had known Brad before and I said, well, that's, that's kind of an interesting thing to do. And uh, went out and found out how you could apply to be a commissioner, either $100 or 300 signatures and figured out how to do it and ran for commission. Okay, and uh, I, I guess, well, following Mayor Wallacher's untimely death, why did you decide then to run for mayor? Well, when Denny and I were working together, I was the deputy mayor, and actually mm -hmm. his last run, um, I was going to run for mayor at that time. And Denny wanted to run one more time because he was hoping to see the diversion start. So he said, I'd like to do this one more time. So that, that was the intent. And then unfortunately got sick mm -hmm. first year of that of that uh, tenure, so. Yeah, with that said, but, uh, why do you think you won? Do you, you think maybe uh, you were seen as sort of the heir apparent and the right-hand man of, of Denny Wallacher? Or? Well, I, I think two issues came up is that during the floods you'd see me a lot and a lot of people I think learned to trust that. Uh, Denny and I worked closely on the floods and I think the public saw that. And then I think the second part is, is that I, I've communicated fairly well you know, where my views are, where I sit on things. And I think the public had an idea of what I'd be like and I, I'm hoping that's the reason that I got that race won. Mm -hmm. With that said, what's your relationship? You mentioned Brad Wimmer, of course you ran against him, and uh, so what's your relationship with him? You know, Brad was a good commissioner, and I, I think that he, he did a good job as commissioner. A mayor is a little different step for us all. It's just a little bit more uh, of some things that come up. So uh, he and I are still cordial, uh, and mm -hmm. he's about, he's very engaged in the community, and I hope he stays that way. He is engaged in the community, and yeah, you know, I guess there was a, a vote to, to whether or not you had to resign to run for something like this, and and the, the voters, of course, took issue with that. Well, I think what that'll offer is you may have more candidates running for mayor, you may have mm -hmm. a, a bigger race, you may have other things happen. I think the hard part for the public is is that you would like to have majority voters vote for whoever is leading the city. So I think we will have some debates about that, yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk maybe uh, some generically. We're gonna get into some specifics later, but what are some of the big issues on the horizon right now that the city faces? Well, right now what we're doing is the budget and we've had some controversies over the budget. Uh, Commissioner Gehring's come on and he'd like to reduce the budget by 20%. And he's, he's just what we'd call a newbie on the commission. He doesn't understand a lot of the different things that go on. Countering that, I have a lot of growth in the city and a lot of things happening within the city that you have to uh, look at and see what you're gonna do. Fire is asking for more personnel. Police is asking for more personnel. We have infrastructure needs and infrastructure growth. So it's a matter of trying to balance that. If you have a growing city, your budget is gonna continue to grow. So we'll look at that closely. If there's a way we can trim the budget, we'll do that. But uh, I, I think it's gonna be an interesting couple of months. Well, you know, I had this for later, but I kind of want to ask it now. Talk, talk about the makeup of the city commissioners uh, and how you plan to work with it, all of them. Well, after the election, which is nice because then you finally are voted in and you're truly the mayor, I uh, sat down with every commissioner and talked with them and asked what they wanted to do in the commission. My uh, idea with the commissioners is to have them take some responsibility of different areas. A lot of times the mayor can hang on to the portfolios and then manage them himself, basically. But if you spread that out and have them all take some responsibility, I think that's better. So I've tried to distribute that a little bit. Uh, Pipcorn had some interest in construction. He had an you know, interest in getting the projects done. And he had requested to do engineering. So I said, okay, why don't you get into engineering and see what you can do to help us out. Uh, McGarrick has wanted a variety of things. I put him on utilities so he could learn about our utilities. Now the nice thing about that, I put him in the Human Relations Commission and he's already sparked some interest in there, what things can be done. And Tony brings some of the breadth and knowledge of, of using social media, which some of the other commissioners had not used. So I think he may offer some new things in that. 
And of course, Mike Williams, we know, just loves to get into parking and downtown development, different things that are happening. I think he'll do a great job in that area. And Soblick has been on planning and has a variety of different things under her portfolio. But I think if you utilize them with all their different talents and then have them take a little bit more responsibility, you'll have a, a more enriched commission discussion. And so far what they've seen is I invite discussion, I like people to have some uh, interesting conversations and try to come to a good, idea, good end point of what we're going to do. Now, how often does the commission meet? We meet every two weeks. And uh, what happens in those interim time periods, like now, will develop the budget. So they're all expected to meet with their departments and come up with the budget. The mayor is expected to bring out the budget, but all I'd like to offer is that if they're in charge of some department, is sit down with the department chief, see what they need, and let them be embrace some of the issues. Now, are you a full-time mayor and uh, retired from Ascension, or what, what? Tell us about that. Well, what happened, and Denny got sick. It was just taking a lot of time. So at that time. Essentially, I was doing a call every four and doing an ER and trauma call. Resigned from that position, started private practice, so now I'm in a private practice. Turned out that Fergus Falls needed some help, so it worked out perfect for me. They have me work down there part-time. I cover one weekend a month and then cover some time during the week. So that's much better practice for me because it's not as much night work and it's not as much getting called in. So now I can, they're, they're very generous in how they've allowed me to work my mayor's duties in as being a doctor. So it's much more an elective practice than emergency practice, and it's working out real well. Okay. Well, with that said, let's, let's move on now to some of the issues. FM diversion project, uh, already seen, I guess, a legal ruling in Oxbow, and you know, but, but are we ever gonna see this get funded and constructed or not? You know, we went to Washington to OMB and talked to them about this project. And as far as the core goes, this is one of the top seven projects in the United States. We're the number one program in the fact that we have local funding in place with our sales tax. We have set up with the state. We have con uh, commitments by all these people. So when we talk to OMB, they really like our project. The only problem they have is that our cost-benefit ratio isn't where they'd like it to be. Well, we continue to work on that. We've had some great progress with both senators have done some things to help lately to do that. Yes, it will be funded. The, the issue on that, and I was thinking about that today, John, I'm glad you asked that. Um, just the fact that if flood insurance goes up, we have 20,000 homes that would have to pay flood insurance. That will make it difficult to sell real estate in Fargo. We have a hot market right now, but if you start spending one, two thousand dollars a year on flood insurance, that will start to impact the buyer. So we do have to really address this. As much as I'd love it to wake up one morning and say, hey, we don't need to do it, we need to do it. Mm -hmm. Second issue there is you gotta think about what people of Fargo are doing. We've already taken out 300 homes. The other night we met, we discussed it, and we're gonna have to do eminent domain on 26 homes. So some people that won't voluntarily buy out, now we have to go to the point of saying, no, we need your homes, we're gonna have to move forward on this. So in order to get flood protection, now we're having to move a little bit harder on that. And it's still hard, it impacts people. We went down and talked to the people on Drain 27. And you know, a lot of people in the home that they wanna be retired, have fixed incomes. It's really hard to move out of your home and find a home of equal value. So people are getting hurt by this, but it's, it's what we have to do to move forward. Yeah, do, can you empathize with opponents who consider, some consider this the Fargo Dam? We empathize with them, and I met with the upstream opponents the other day and was talking to them. A lot of their concerns are, is what will I get in crop insurance? What will I get for uh, easement? What are you gonna do for this, Tim? And a lot of that is all federal guidelines of what we would have to do, and I believe we'll be treating them very fairly, and that's our intent, is to try to treat them as fairly as possible. The intent on impact to them is one every 10 years. Well, one in every 10 years, I mean, you could have a bad crop as well. So what we'd like to try to do is work it as best we can, but we have a metro area of 250,000 people, economic engine in Fargo. If that shuts down, I mean, look at Grand Forks and how hard it's been for them to recover. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself, uh, Fargo, and uh, the other things during the floods, I guess, of 97 and 2009? You know, when we had the flood of 2009, I was just so impressed with the people they would do what you asked them to do. So we'd get up in the morning and we'd come up with a game plan and you'd turn out to the public and say, okay, build your dikes to 41 feet, here's what's gonna happen. And I never had anybody complain. Nobody called in and complained about it. People just did what you asked them. And I remember distinctly, Denny and I were walking through the Fargo Dome one morning and we were trying to get to 3.5 million sandbags. And you had people all over working. You had women with their children getting the bags open. You had different people doing stuff. And the mood was excellent. People were wonderful. 
I think we had, you know, that was a lot of times people call that one of our finest moments because whatever you asked the people to do, they did. Um, I remember some people left their homes and they put a note on the door, uh, have left, I'm at grandma's or friends, it's at this number, call me if you need anything, doors are open, do what you need to do. Nobody ever robbed anybody, nobody went to their homes, everybody was aware of that. The guard came in, they did their job. Our fire and police did an excellent job, all our city workers did an excellent job. I think it was one of our finest moments as a city. Mm. I, I would agree with you on that one. Uh, can, you, can you tell the folks uh, a little bit about the diversion, and you mentioned property, but property assessment, something was recently mailed out uh, to the uh, citizens of Fargo. Yeah, unfortunately what happened is they followed state law on the property assessments, and I don't think it got ex you know explained as well to people as it could be. So there's two different ways of funding, and when you go to the bond market, you try to fund on the sales tax. Well, the bonding market isn't sure that we're going to keep our sales tax coming in at the rate it is, and it continues to come in at a high rate. So they would only let us borrow at 60% of what our bond value is. So that really makes it more expensive, and then the money's more expensive. So the assessment district was an attempt to get cheaper money, basically, to do the, the project quicker. We're looking at a private-public pub partnership. Maybe we could get it down to six years, eight years. Well, if we can build that fast, we need the money. So what the assessment does is we can borrow money easier and cheaper, saves us about $100 million. So long-term sales tax, we would have to continue to pay, but we're going to pay that assessment off for the people. So unless our sales tax goes crazy, that should all be covered. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's move on to uh, some other things now. How about a new conference center or arts center in Fargo? You know, what we're debating right now is when Charlie Johnson came to us from the Visitors Bureau, he says we're at the step as a city is that there's a lot of people who want to come into Fargo. They like the entertainment, they like the dining, they like what's going on in the community. So what they'd like to do is have a convention center of 50 to 100 square, 100,000 square feet. And we're competing with Bismarck, Grand Forks, and Minneapolis, so, and Sioux Falls. So you kind of have to say, are we ready to do this? There's no question that if you have convention things in the community, it brings in money and brings in economics. So what we're looking at is where, where would that be and how would be the best way to do that. I think that's going to take at least another 12 to 18 months of discussion to figure out where should it be, how big should it be, and what are we going to do about it. Could you talk some maybe about some of the potential sites for it right now or at all? Two potential sites basically looked at would be downtown. Um, Howard Johnson is going to be vacated. That land may be a, a great place to put it. It would be right behind the new city hall. And uh, the Fargo Dome, of course, is the other site people talk about. The Fargo Dome, when they're going to get the basketball arena, uh, you know, that's going to be a huge boon for that area as well. So now they've maybe cut down how much space they need. When we talked to Dean Brashani for NDSU, they would like some exhibit hall, maybe 20 to 40,000 square feet. So there might be a combination. You expand some of the Fargo Dome and you do a convention center downtown. Okay. Well, let's even expand that a little bit. Uh, what, talk about the downtown growth over the last 20 years and uh, you know, especially the last 15 years, even, or 10. I think, you know, it's really fun when people come back to Fargo and they come into our downtown and say, Tim, that's not the same Fargo I, I left 10 years ago or 15 years ago. But we're one of the top 10 cities in the nation right now, and people like to feel what's going on downtown. I think we're going to have a couple major projects that are going to happen in the next few years as well. We'll get some more hotels downtown, some more other things going on in the downtown area. Uh, the Renaissance Zone, it's one of those examples where it worked perfect for us. We started at a certain amount of property taxes that are down there. It's double to triple that, and people have seen a nice growth in that area. Mm -hmm. I think we'll continue to see that to grow and develop. We're seeing a lot of people now are moving down there. Uh, the Millenniums have a different idea how to live. They're not all looking for a suburban type of house. They're looking for apartments. They're looking for where they can go out, get something to eat, and come back into their area. Well, let's talk more about that growth. You know, where is the city growing and, of course, can it grow even more? Well, what we talked about the other day, I got the team together because our real challenge right now is affordable housing. So whether you're a young, young professional starting out or if you're going to retire and want to find something where you want to live, where are you going to do that? We need to revitalize some of our neighborhoods. So if you look at our Jeff Jefferson Initiative, how to make that school area work well for the people that live there, the neighborhoods, how are you going to get young people to live in that area? So what we're talking to the planning department is, look how we can rejuvenate some of our neighborhoods so we don't have the problem we talked about earlier where we have to shuttle children from south to north because the population is going down. 
Northside just had a new development that's going in that will be really nice to add families to those, those areas. But we need to look at the whole city and see where we can rejuvenate some areas so we don't have all the growth in the south. Well, with that said, because obviously I, I remember having Mayor Wallacher sit here and we talked about this, because obviously uh, the city is somewhat, uh, has only certain ways it can go as far as land territory. So can you talk a little bit about that? We're a long, skinny city, and yeah. that's our problem we have. So a lot of times our growth is going to go either south or north, mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of west to go. We have West Fargo sitting there, and east we got the river. So the reality is, yeah, we have some confines of just to where we have. We have 2,000 lots right now available for growth. So we do have space for people if they want to build a new house to go in that area. But we do have the issues of infill, and we've always talked about that. I'm seeing some nice projects down in North Fargo. We're going to see some nice apartments, townhomes, different things like that done that will increase the density and allow more options for people. And we're having the home builders, we're going to meet with them and the realtors and see what else we can come up with as interesting places for people to live. Yeah. Well, I've had the West Fargo mayor here too. And I, if, has there ever been any talk of consolidation of the cities at all? Well, we had a good relationship with Rich and what we've talked about is helping out in the water. And they're looking at a water proposal we gave them. Uh, sewage at some point, we may want to get rid of their lagoons, and we could do something in that area probably in three years to help work that out. Regionally, we're trying to be a regional center, and if we can work together with other communities, we're happy to do that. Harwood we work with, Oxbow we work with, uh, Horace we've asked, do they need any help? So our idea is if we can you know, decrease costs by w working together, that's a better way of doing things. Mm -hmm. what a, you know, there's a lot of po population growth in North Dakota. Oil boom's a part of that, but uh, an influx of people coming in. Uh, Senator Heidkamp was here last week and we talked about crime in North Dakota. How concerned are you with crime in Fargo? Well, very concerned. When we got the gang report, that was very disturbing to us to see the amount of gangs that are coming into the community. And it was interesting, I was listening to the report last night and a gentleman was talking about, well, gee, Fargo's a perfect place. You're close to Canada, you can do things there. You're in between the east and the west coast. You have drug traffic, you have a variety of things happening. So in some ways, we've become a center because of our commerce or our interstate or how we sit in the country. And Chief uh, Todd came to me the other day and he said, hey, Tim, I need six more officers next year and I probably need six officers every year for the next 10 years with the growth we're having. So it's kind of trying to balance that out. I think people feel it's a safe community and we have to continue to do that. If you don't feel safe, that's when things become a little uncomfortable in a city or city living. But here's the transition we're going into, John, is we're becoming an urban center. We're no longer a sleepy little town. We're really becoming a place of entertainment, uh, of different shopping, different things people can do. And so what we have to do is be careful we don't become an urban center full of problems. I loved the video the other day of the policemen who were playing basketball. Mm -hmm. And Chief Todd, we've talked about that. So let's reach out to the community and become close to the community members so that we don't have as many issues as we could have in a big community. And I think that's where we're headed with some of our enforcement and what we need to do. And for some uh, may not have seen it, some officers were out training on bicycles and uh, ended up doing a little pickup game. Pickup game with her flak jackets on. So I said <laughs> that would have been fun to watch. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, so why do you think Fargo's economy is, is so strong? You know, I, I was already concerned. Uh, 1980, when I started, it almost seemed to me, you, you watched two things in the community. You watched uh, farm prices and you watched car sales. And it seemed to me when farm prices were up, guys were doing well, the car sales were going well. When farm prices went down, then the car lots were full and not a lot was being sold. As time has progressed, we've grown away from that. We have education centers, health centers, we have commerce, we have manufacturing. We have a nice balance of all the different things a large urban center should have. So what we're seeing right now, we were real concerned when the oil boom went down. What's going to happen to Fargo? Because now it's slowing down out there. We didn't see a slowdown. We saw that continue to grow. We have beautiful health facilities going up. Essentia Health and Sanford have beautiful buildings going up. We're going to become a destination for a lot of people to come into the community for a variety of different issues. So we've seemed to balance that off. Microsoft does some layoffs, but then Microsoft continues to grow. There's software companies around that. So it seems where something seems to slow down, we have something else speed up a little bit. So uh, so far, we've had a very balanced economy. Mm -hmm. And so why does Fargo attract, it seems like, so many young professionals to town? I think we finally hit the, <laughs> hit the mark. Um, 
when I first ran in 205, I said, the thing I'd love to see is have my son come back to Fargo. I would like my kids to come back to Fargo because this is the place to live. And at that time, we saw the out-migration. But I think the thing that's happened, you have to have two things. You have to have education centers close to the area, and you have to have job availability. And I think we're hitting those marks in interesting areas that, that uh, young professionals are interested in. So I think what we're seeing now is that, hey, Fargo has some things I can do. I was at a mayor's conference the other day, uh, or a couple of months ago, and a guy from California came up to me, and he said, Tim, what, you know, you're the mayor of Fargo, right? He said, yeah. He said, what are you guys doing up there? I said, what do you mean, what are we doing up there? He said, I have a lot of young professionals that aren't choosing Silicon Valley in California. They're choosing Fargo. And he said, is it like a cool place or what? <laughs> so I said, well, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. We do. Yeah, all right. Uh, turn back to Mayor Wallacher for just a moment. You know, he, he sometimes had a, a testy relationship, I guess, with, we'll call it, with North Dakota legislature on some tough matters. Uh, how do you see your approach when you deal with lawmakers? Well, he did have a testy relationship, and then he'd say whatever he thought. So, I mean, that was one of the things that he's a legend for, and oftentimes we'd say, Denny, you probably shouldn't have said <laughs> that, but that was Denny. Um, what I've tried to do with legislative people is be honest, forthright, tell them what we need. Uh, they've been very good to us this year. They, the things we asked for and the things we needed, they've been good about. We've also established a relationship with the western part of the state as well. They have infrastructure needs. We have infrastructure needs. We say, hey, we have so many of the similar problems. Why don't we work together on that? So what we've tried to do, and, and I've had a better relationship with them, this session went very well, just being honest with them what we needed and not ask for too much. And uh, I think that works well. Hmm. well again, with Mayor Wallacher, you know, a lot of people know him as the flood fighting mayor, uh, so to speak, but what do you think Mayor Wallacher has meant to this city and how has he sort of left his mark even for the future of Fargo? Well, he's left his mark. I mean, Denny was just a wholehearted guy. I mean, he'd love to go out with him. You know, if you walked into any place, people would come up and talk to him and hug him and get their picture with him. Uh, it was great to be with him in a bar because usually you get your beer bought for you. Uh, but he was just one of those honest guys that I think a lot of people identified with. And, and the love for the city was always there. And it, well, he wore that on his sleeve. And he hated, I mean, he hated complaints because he's like, oh, you know, what can we do about this? And he always wanted people not to be upset about city services or what went on public works. So he's a type of guy that I think a lot of us identified, just a normal working Joe that, that uh, you know, like a lot of times he said, Tim, I'm the luckiest guy in the world to be Mayor Fargo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, speaking of being mayor, uh, we, we talked a little bit about it, but what's your relationship with sort of West Fargo, Moorhead, and I'll throw Dilworth in there too, because y'all y'all have uh, annual city meetings together and uh, presentations. And of course, you've got a combined chamber of commerce with some of the cities. Uh, talk about all that relationship. Well, that's always interesting because we're at events together all the time. So you, after a while, you get to know each other, kind of know what goes on. Uh, Rich Mattern, you know, we've gone back and forth on things, and uh, Rich has been really good because there's certain things he needs for his city, and he's a very strong advocate. Uh, Mayor Williams and I have met. She's got some things that she needs, and it's taken her a while, I think, her role as mayor to learn, you know, what, it, what do we need to do and how can we make things work better together? And I think she's a strong advocate for many things. Chad Olson's a great guy to have on a panel because everything sounds wonderful. I mean, <laughs> you'd think that uh, Dilworth was uh, 100,000 people. I mean, it's a great place to live and people to be. But he's a good advocate for the communities. So he wants the Fargo Mohead area to do well. And that's good. And I think the four of us work well together. Well, obviously, we, we're, we're still getting the tag newly elected mayor. So with all that said, you know, you said now you're getting into, you're, you're there. What are the goals? What are your immediate goals and future and long range goals? Well, I think we have good economic growth and development in the city of Fargo, and I'd like that to continue, and that's something that I have to work very hard on. First goal right now is just to get the budget done and kind of set a vision for the city as where we're headed. The second goal is really to engage the community and find out what they want going forward. So there's some things that we have to wrestle down. We would do a convention center. What do you do with the civic center? What are the things that are important to them? Um, affordable housing, uh, revitalizing our neighborhoods. How are we gonna do that and how do people wanna engage that? I met with some neighborhood groups that are very engaged to what can we do in our neighborhood and how can the city help us get it better or do different things? 
uh, renewable energy. What are we going to do in the renewable energy area? So I think what's going to be interesting this year is just to start to set some visions, get some, I'm, I'm kind of a data-driven person, get some data, lay it out for the public, and then have the public decide what should we do. Yeah, but Mayor, you get everything from can you fix the pothole in my street <laughs> to, yeah, we need a, a new convention center. That's true. That's true. And you got to sort that out. But uh, it's been a it's been a very enjoyable uh, being in this role, and and it's different than commissioner because people expect you to represent Fargo. Uh, absolutely. So here you get to tell us all why is Fargo a great city and a great place to live. You know, probably my best example is that when you walk around Fargo, it's very unusual that people don't greet you. It's usually, a, a, if you get into a big city, people are very non-prone to say, hello, how are you, what you doing? I can't walk anywhere in, in the Skyway, downtown, grocery store without people being friendly. And even when people have complaints, oftentimes, I don't mean to bother you, Tim, but here's a concern. And I think that if we continue that embracing type of community, we'll always do very well. Yeah. We're out of time. If people want more information, where's the best place to go? It's just City of Fargo. It'd be T. Mahoney at cityoffargo.com. Well, Mayor, thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome, John. Right. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse this week. And as always, thanks for watching. by the members of Prairie Public.